Welcome to the Straight Fire Show, where you know every time, I mean every time, I'm bringing an amazing guest. And today, today is no different. I have the amazing, wonderful superstar, Miss <laughs> Tiffany Jenkins. And before, like, let's do a round of applause. Yay! And so let me read, I'm, let me read your bio really quick. I have it printed. So forgive me why I'm not looking at you. <laughs> this is a funny lady behind juggling the Jenkins. She has over 3.6 million Facebook followers. That number is much bigger now too, right? I mean, that's a super impressive number. She's a wife, mother, author, content creator, recovering addict. Although best known for her funny viral Facebook and YouTube videos, Tiffany is incredibly passionate about bringing awareness to mental illness, which is just, just an awesome um, thing. She speaks shamelessly, openly, and honestly about her past addiction, as well as her struggles with depression, anxiety, and has been featured on national television shows like the Today Show and the Doctors. Awesome. What a story. So one, I want to make sure we talk about this amazing book, <laughs> which I have to tell you, my beautiful wife sitting next to me, we just got back from um, a vacation in Destin, Florida. And I was like, yo, do you want to hang out with your husband? Or are we just going to read this book the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> Literally every downtime we had, I was on the couch, like under a blanket reading. And I never Aww. late to like, you know, once everybody goes to bed, I get in bed and go to sleep or watch a show with him. Mm -mm. Put everybody to bed, got under a blanket on the couch and was just reading until my eyes couldn't stay open. So I was so tired, but it was, Besides Judge's book, your book, I kid you not, on my children, is the only, those are the only two books I've read since we've had kids. And our kids wow. are 10 on Monday. Yeah. So, like, so congrats. Yeah, so that's a big thing. That's like, I kid you not, that's a big thing because, you know, like as, as moms, we get so busy and we just don't have time or we're tired when we can finally read. Um, and I still love to read, but this, I was just like, Whoop. Everybody give me my time and let me read. Wow. Great. Thank you. Very inspirational. So, Lots of things I never knew. So what a cool way Jordan hooked us up together, right? So my book, Scale with Speed, was right next to your book in an airport, right? Yeah. And we reached out and um, she was like, oh my God, you don't understand all the videos that I show you every single night. That's her. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so- mm -hmm. You, you were making me laugh. So, I mean, it's like a daily ritual. We'll be, you know, in bed before about to go to bed. And I just look over and Jordan's just cracking up. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you watching? And then, so then I became a fan just through that. So, you know, what's, what's really cool is uh, I love that your videos are inspiring, um, you know, people and addicts and the things that you do um, in your, your free time. But it's also inspiring everybody. Right. I mean, even if they're not an addict, I mean, we, uh, you know, what's great about you and we we're just now meeting each other is the authenticity of being real. Mm. And we're such an environment right now where there's so many fake people and social is dominated by, you know, the guy or gal in front of the Lambo and they're living these facades of, of lives and yep. you're bringing real shit. And part of the reason your success is where it's at, in my opinion is because you're freaking true to who you are and giving that authenticity. So I commend you on that. It's amazing. Thank you so much. These compliments, I can't handle it. You guys just spend like get five minutes talking about how great I am. <laughs> I like, I love this podcast. Thank you. <laughs> podcast <everybody. laughs> yeah, um, and it is so, do you want to know why I think it's so crazy is that when I, when I posted the picture on Instagram of, I was so excited about my book being in the airport. And so I took a selfie with it. And literally I was saying to myself, like, should I blur out the books around it? Like, I don't know if I should just make it about my book. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to leave it. And like that decision that I made led to this moment. And it's just crazy to how the world works, man. It's just crazy. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So how have you been handling, right, this influx of, of of fame right i mean i would say you're a major personality brand you're you know people are influencing they're constantly commenting on your stuff and you're constantly you know exposing yourself and your family have you struggled with that at all yes every single day yeah. uh, um, I, the truth is is it was never my intention for this to happen especially so quickly mm -hmm. i started doing it as an outlet for fun and then suddenly like boom, 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 boom. 
and it's been two years since I put my first video up and things have escalated so quickly and now I'm getting um, emails from people who feel comfortable enough to open up and share their issues that they're going through which is amazing but also can sometimes be overwhelming because I want to save everybody and I can't right and I often equate like what's going on with my life and this uh, juggling the Jenkins thing to like a newborn baby crawling into a business building and somebody walking up to the baby and like putting a CEO badge on it and being like, okay, you're in charge now. Like I'm in charge of this sudden business and I don't know what I'm doing. You know what you do. Okay. The, the reason you've got to give yourself more credit. And I, I was listening to one um, of the videos that you were in and you were saying, listen, if I can write a book, anybody can. Right. And that's true. You know, I, I feel I feel that same way. But your determination, your drive to take action, to write, to do right. I mean, so many people in life, um, I call them the dreamers. Dreamers are great to be around because they're positive, they're uplifting, but they're constantly dreaming. They're never taking action. Right. And so it anybody can write a book, but you got to want it. Right. You've got to yeah. commit. You've got to put that time in. And, you know, this is a serious book. I mean, this is, <laughs> you know, what is this is, uh, you know, close to 400 pages. I mean, that's a lot to put out there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough process. So I commend that. And it's, uh, it's really cool. And the book's doing amazing, right? It's everywhere. Um, your book sales, you're on a book tour. I mean, it's just kicking ass. Yeah, I'm so surprised. That book was, I actually self-published that book myself back in 2017 on Amazon. Um, and again, I, like I didn't graduate high school. I ended up dropping out of high school when I got in the midst of my addiction. And so I had to Google like how to write a book and how to, how to publish a book. And you're right. Like the old me would have been like, this is too many steps. I can't do this. But the new me was like, hey, dude, Guys, get in the room and watch Paw Patrol. Mommy's about to be an author. Let's Paw do Patrol, this. Paw Patrol, Paw <laughs> Patrol, on the double. Yeah, you know the I, song. Love, I love that song. You need to go to her in Dallas because so many people said, "Oh, let's go see her." And I'm like, she's not. She hasn't come here yet. So, oh, I would love to. I will put that on the list. Mm -hmm. um, you have an open invite to stay with us if you need, yeah. if you'd like to. Done. On my way. Thank you. <laughs> I won't be crazy fangirl, you know. Cool. So, I'll, I'll be sleeping and open my eyes, and she'll just be standing. Open yeah, exactly. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? What's going on? So um, let's let's talk about addiction, right? I mean, that's that's part of the main platform. And um, I watched a video; um, it was a powerful video. I think it was on the Today Show, and you talked about you know addiction isn't what people always think as far as the perception, it's not the homeless person, you know, on the street, it can be anybody. And, you know, that brought a lot of clarity to me. And, and, and I think that's where you're probably impacting people the most, because there's so many people that are struggling with addiction that's, that's hidden, right? It's the facade. They're, they're, they're married, they're working, they're, they have children or whatever, but they're struggling with that. And I think your message is starting to resonate for people to raise that hand and say, you know what, maybe I am an addict. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the problem, just because I'm not on the fucking street, homeless, yep. this is a real fucking problem for me and I've got to fix it, right? You yeah. Know? Yeah, ex expand a little bit. I mean, because you, you've had, I mean, that, that's the platform, right? Yes, so I, I try my best to educate people about, you know, addiction through humor because they tend, to listen more and I just want to make it like an okay thing to talk about. So many people keep this secret hidden because of shame and fear of judgment. Mm. And that's what, and it's so powerful that fear. So the you, nurses, doctors, mm -hmm. lawyers, like addiction doesn't care if you have children. Addiction doesn't care if you have a cool job or you're trying to be somebody. If, if you have an addictive personality, then there's a good chance that you can become powerless over something and your life will become unmanageable. And that's how you know, you gotta ask yourself, like, if I tried to stop, would I be able to on my own? Am I, is my life unmanageable? Mm. And mine certainly was. And so I just want people to know that 
if we, I understand the anger surrounding hatred, I mean, surrounding addiction, because we're not the best people when we're in active addiction. Like we will rob you and lie to you and break your heart. Mm -hmm. But I, I just really want to encourage people to take a second and put that anger in a separate box for now and try to lead with empathy. Like mm-hmm. try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Try to take a second and realize this is somebody's kid. You know, this is somebody loves this person and they are lost and kicking them while they're down is not going to help us find the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, Tiffany, talk to me about, um, and for the people that are watching that are what I would call in um, denial of addiction, right? Because mm-hmm. my assumption is there's a denial. And you you also framed up people, you know, are addicted to drugs, pills, they're addicted to this phone, their they're addiction. Um, and, and you mentioned one of your videos, and I and, and I believe I have the same thing, and, and probably Jordan, a very addictive personality, right? Yeah. Whether it's Netflix, dude, I'm freaking all in, right? I'm going to watch <laughs> all of them. I'm fucking addicted. Whatever yeah. it is, right? Now, you, you've dealt with the extreme, which is drugs and pills. But for the person that's in denial, specifically with something, you know, really dangerous like that, you know, mm-hmm. what point in your mind did it get out of control? Because there's probably a point where you were like, I'm not addicted, I'm not addicted. And then it was fucking bad. Like it just went bad. Yeah. I mean, what advice or, or where, where do you start to teeter totter where, you know, you can't look back on that addiction? Well, for me, the addiction started off as fun until there was a night where I was uh, laying in bed and it felt like my bones were in a vice grip and like the air was the sharp needle stabbing my skin. I was so sick. And I was like, what is going on? I called my best friend and I said, I can't come out tonight. I don't feel well. And she said, have you had a pill today? And I was like, no, she's like, that's probably why take one. You'll be okay. And so I went and I got one and I took one and instantly all of that physical pain went away within five minutes. Wow. And, and so that was the night that I stopped doing the pills for fun and started doing them because I had to in order to not feel like I was dying. And honestly, if you were to ask me, I would have gladly, it got to a point where I would have chosen death over withdrawal any day because it gets so painful. And then the mental starts to kick in after a while. And you're like, all I have to do is take one sip of alcohol or take one pill and all of this agony will go away. And so then you're battling with wanting to stop, but also wanting the pain to stop. And if somebody out there is in denial, like they're the only ones who can decide whether or not they have a problem. You know, I think that deep down you start to get an inkling, like I'm doing this too much or, you know, I'm spending too much money. People are starting to treat me differently. And they even have online tests you could do for free. You like go to this website and do a checklist. You know, you might be an alcoholic if, and just the most important thing is being in tune with yourself and, you know, recognizing and acknowledging where you're at and then taking the proper action. Yeah. Man, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome that you're sharing this and, and, you know, that addiction led to what I'm assuming is one of the darkest times in your life, right? You're, you are, tried to commit suicide, right? I've got a buddy named Sean Whalen. I don't know if you are familiar with Sean Whalen. In his, in his book, he talks about suicide. He, he put a nine millimeter in his mouth and was about to pull the trigger and talks about he's never going to forget that taste of oil and gunpowder residue in his mouth, right? And that wake up call that he had was suicide because he was just out of control, right? So my, that essentially that addiction then led to a potential suicide, right? That, Absolutely. I, I ended up, um, I was in a relationship with the deputy for about two and a half years and I committed many crimes and then eventually those crimes caught up with me and I was put in jail, um, with around 20 felonies. And as I detoxed in the jail, while the reality of the life that I had created set in and the uncertain future, I was, I was like, I can't. I can't do it anymore. And I wanted to die so badly. I wanted more than anything to be free of this broken body and the pain that this earth, um, you know, created, I created. And so I made the decision to end my life three days into jail. And I, I actually attempted and 
was almost successful, but I wasn't. And I remember being so angry that they found me and I couldn't understand because I felt like it's my life. Are you going to come and live my life for me? Because I don't know how to effing live without drugs. I don't know how to function. And frankly, I don't have the energy to try. So unless you're going to come live my life for me, please let me die. Um, but of course, I didn't know back then, you know, how, how amazing life was going to get for me. So them saving me turned out to be the greatest gift, you know, I've ever been given. Well, you know, I, I don't know if you, you believe in a higher power of fate, but I think that you're here because of that, right? Yeah. You're, you're influencing these 3.5 million people that are afraid to say, I can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm in delusion. I'm not an addict, right? I mean, you're teaching them, which I love the B Jordan showed me the, the B and the, the present on there, your, your tattoo. Such oh, a, yeah. I love that. It's such a great mindset, that. right? I mean, yeah. be present, right? I mean, you had a freaking second chance and that everything you're going to do, you're going to be present and you're going to overcome those things. So, you know, I truly believe you're <laughs> here for, the purpose that you're doing right now, you're helping influence, you're giving back, you know, how many people are struggling with what you have and are at that brink of suicide. And if they just get in front of that message, if you just help one person, it was worth all of it, you know? So it's a, I know this is all heavy and deep, so we'll move on to another topic, but, (laughs) but it's, it's, it's your platform and it's, it's, it's amazing. So, so talk to everybody about, so now fast forward, you, you've been recovered for five years, right? Six and a half. Six and a half now, okay, um, which is awesome, right? <laughs> Thank you. And, and it's, I know it's still got to be a struggle, right? I mean, it's never not a struggle. That's my assumption. Yeah, so it's not, I wouldn't say it's a struggle, I, but I'm always going to be an addict. Yeah. I can, you know, if I took a pill this evening, I guarantee you within a month, I will have lost everything. Right. Um, so I have to remain diligent. But the cool thing is, you know, I feel like by going to rehab and going to a halfway house and staying connected to people in recovery, I was able to fill my toolbox with all kinds of cool uh, tools to pull out during times where I need to cope. And so, you know, there's a million things that I would reach for before reaching for drugs or alcohol to help me feel better. Yeah, that's awesome. They so get are, you, are you enjoying uh, the speaking or, or, or do you get nervous or I feel like I'm going to crap my pants every single time because oh, dude, I have like this weird introverted social anxiety thing going on, which is surprising to a lot of people, but I have this fear of rejection. I have this fear of silence and because I would have to get up on stage in front of, you know, whatever, 300 to a thousand people, and tell my story, the dark parts and the funny parts. It was, it was a lot. Uh, and before each show, I would do a 150 person meet and greet, which also yeah. as an energy empath, trainer. Yeah. 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 But um, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. The only reason I agreed to even do the tour was to meet my supporters. That's yeah. it. And so I was willing to put all my fears and stuff on the back burner to get to hug some of them. So. Yeah, but what a great feeling, right? I mean, I don't care how, I mean, the biggest speakers in the world on the biggest stages, if they're not getting nervous going up there, they're, they're lying, right? I mean, it's everybody is. So you're not by yourself by, by any regard in that. And then, but, you know, when you're up there, are you just, is it euphoric in that moment once you're past that fear and all those supporters and all of that? I mean, are you loving that piece of it? Yeah, I've always been a huge ham. Um, and so, you know, hearing an audience like roar with laughter was like uh, unparalleled. I was like, I can't, the whole time I'm up there, I'm like, I can't believe this is my life. This is so crazy. There was a time when people would, you know what I mean? Hide their belongings when I came over and not want to talk to me. And the fact that people are purchasing tickets to listen to me, just, it's baffling really. Yeah, well, it's not. I mean, you're, it's, it's so cool. So you, you're doing your comedy, your skits, which, which um, you know, a lot of people I think are starting to mimic you or trying to mimic you. And to me, yeah. that's, a, that's a huge sign that you're doing the right thing and you're on to success. It just, yeah. you know, so 
on that platform, you're going to continue to grow. You're going to, are you still going to try to do this? Because I imagine doing those skits. I mean, that's a lot of work and practice and doing, right? It takes a lot of time. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. I skits are my favorite. I love it. I love dressing up. And I think <laughs> it's funny that you said that because I notice more and more people are coming forward and doing, you know, sharing their truth about addiction and mental illness. And then there's people doing, when you said they mimicked me, I thought that was neat. And I'm, I have this weird fear that people, anybody can do this. You know what I mean? Anybody can put on a skit and have people think it's funny and share it. And so I'm always so afraid that it's going to go away or the next mm. best person is going to come and take my spot and then I'm going to be irrelevant. And so I'm in a constant state of panic and also trying to find material while remaining genuine. I think yeah. everything has a season and, you know, when it's my time to retire from being a weirdo, hopefully I'll find <laughs> something else I'm passionate about. Yeah, no, I think you just keep going. You just keep innovating, right? I mean, um, when you start to see the mimicking, that means it's you're on to something that's successful and you being the innovator is what's next, right? And that's, that's a challenge I believe any successful entrepreneur is constantly faced with, right? If you're not feeling that panic, I believe yeah. that you're not, you know, you're not motivated enough to get better. And I think it's a good sign that you're feeling that panic. Although it sucks feeling that way, I feel yeah. that way as, as well. But it's a sign to just keep driving, keep pushing, keep, you know, doing better. But what I think is amazing about your skits is when Jordan will put them on, I'm like, oh my God, that's our freaking elementary. Like, <laughs> I know exactly who that mom is. I know exactly yeah. who that mom is. I know, like, we're, we're in the, uh, the, the pickup line, right? And we're driving and, you know, you got the, the lady pushing and Jordan's like, we got to go, get him out of the car, get him out of the car. <laughs> we got to get the kids out now, yeah. you know? So, yeah. so it's like, you know, everything that you do is so relatable. I mean, Perfect mom's get, the, like the PTA mom. Yeah. Mine is my favorite. Oh dude. It's like so spot on. I it's like I fucking saw, crazy. I saw that when we what, like a year or two ago. It was one of the, it's the first skit I ever saw of yours. And I, I stumbled upon it and I was like, <gasps> dying, like tears coming down my face. So I was like, oh, I know that mom. <laughs> I know perfect, like little in her pearls with her Starbucks coffee mom. And you know, yes. so, so it's good. Before I knew your uh, story on a deeper level, this was uh, like, I don't know, motivational to me too because I was like oh my gosh I'm not the only one like trying to push my kid back in the car or not being perfect or not having it all together and that's okay I was like it's so nice to see that so yeah because else, the us moms are in this together so uh, yeah I was inspired by your stuff yeah because yeah. before I knew anything else this came later all the information you know everything that I learned in your book your, your story but uh, yeah, it's so funny. I have probably for I forward your stuff all the time, but that particular one, I have forwarded it to so many friends. I'm like, just watch this, just watch, this. just watch. Uh, this, you know, back thank to you. It's just, it's because social's dangerous, so right? It's yeah. it's this facade of the perfect mom, the yeah. perfect marriage, the perfect business, the perfect pop, 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 pop. So I thought you've brought reality and levity yeah. to that, which is so which is awesome. Fresh air. We all need it. You know what, though? It's so crazy to me because you guys helped me feel okay with who I am. For a long time, I thought I was crazy. Like, the if my brain had a morning meaning video before, I, I almost didn't put that out because I was like, this is going to, you know, confirm how crazy I am. People are going to think I'm nuts. But it's one of my most popular videos because so yeah. many people can relate and it shows me yeah. yeah, but I'm not as crazy as I thought I was. Yeah, I think you're far from crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think yeah. you. I think I think you're you're very, you're closer to normal than than, than you yeah, think. That's normal thing. in the regard, like you're you know not normal. You're you were above normal in your business and everything. But normal is a mom, a yeah. parent, the, you yeah, know, a wife. The struggles yeah, struggles of being a mom and a wife and a businesswoman and everything. Yeah, because the brain Thank is you. hilarious. I'm like, oh. I feel like if that was my brain, that's right on. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to take too, too much of your time. So what's next, right? So you, you're doing, you've got the book. I've heard talks of a potential movie. You're on tour. You've got over, you know, 3.5 million fans. What's, 
what's next or do you want to share what's next? I honestly have no friggin' clue uh, yeah. what's next. I have found that like literally every single day presents new, amazing, incredible opportunities and experiences. And so I have no choice but to live my life like day to day yeah. for the most part. Um, there's nothing scheduled for me as of now. I actually just wrapped up the tour. So I'm kind of home with the kids and my husband and, you know, trying to reground. Um, but there's nothing huge on the calendar other than just making weirdo videos and, uh, you know, doing what I can. We love it. Keep doing that. And Joe, I, most everybody's already following you, but when people uh -huh. want to connect <laughs> with you, what, what are the best? Give me your Instagram handle, your Facebook handle, or if somebody wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to connect with you? Sure. Thank you. Uh, juggling the Jenkins are my handles and juggling the Jenkins at email or <laughs> that's not it. Gmail. <laughs> if they want to send me an email. Um, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I'm so weird. I don't know. Why. I feel so awkward talking, like promoting. It felt promoting. And then I got in my own head and I was like, this is, but yeah, just juggling the Jenkins, Google it. Yeah, it's not promoting. Again, listen, your message is helping people. So it's not promotional. And the reason I believe that you're successful as you are is because you aren't promoting and it's authentic and it's real. But I'm going to promote you because I'm a promoter. So anybody <laughs> who hasn't bought this book, okay, listen, she hasn't written, our oldest son is 10 years old and she's written, you know, wrote, written, read, I can't even talk today. <laughs> She read my book because she was forced to because I'm her husband. And, and she read this book and loved it, right? And, and so I encourage everybody. It's everywhere, right? Amazon to Barnes & Noble yeah. to Hudson, anywhere you can, buy this book. Be inspired. This lady is truly amazing. And I am grateful. And thank you for being on my show. Um, and I hope we continue to build a friendship. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm glad fate brought you guys to me and I look forward to chatting more. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much.